Usually, a good underspin serve is a good way to start a point because it can force the receiver to push the ball back, yielding the server the option to attack. A good flip shot can turn this usually safe serve into a dangerous choice because the receiver immediately grabs the offensive. Step in with the racket open and raise the hand a little over the intended contact point. After the ball bounces, lower your hand and with a sort of scooping motion, play the ball, contacting it on its lower portion and then turn the racket over to project the ball over the net. Make sure you keep your body in solid balance and give the ball enough forward motion. The success of this shot depends very much on your confidence. You cannot hold back or you'll drop it in the net. The backhand flip is like a mini loop. It all happens over the table, so you can't have a big backswing. Again, it is important to keep your body well balanced. Drop the racket a little before contact and brush over the ball with a crisp, quick motion. This is the contact point. Be sure to give it enough forward momentum. Back and flip, you have to use a lot of wrist. You have to prepare with your body the good position that you can make your back and flip. And with wrist, you can make direction change in last moment. You rate the ball when it's the highest position, and then you can make your back and flip hard and deep. The wrist action is the most obvious requirement, but an important factor that makes a huge difference in the quality of the flip is the rotation of the whole arm. The elbow turns downward on contact. This is what gives the ball the necessary forward drive. As with all short balls that require you to step in and reach over the table, make sure you recover immediately so you can't get caught off balance by a long ball. The drop shot is an effective change-up shot, when the opponent might have been expecting a push and stayed back a little. The drop shot keeps the ball very short and forces the opponent to quickly come forward to play the ball. This can force an error and give you the opportunity to attack. Play the ball very soon after the bounce. Let it drop onto your racket, and without much motion, use the rubber's springiness to let the ball rebound back over the net. Keep it as low as possible. The drop shot you use when someone makes you short service, then you, uh, then you make a drop shot that uh, he cannot attack you after the third ball. And this is very important that, uh, that you use a lot of feeling. And this is, I think, the difference between top players and the standard players that they have really good feeling for this uh, drop shot ball. It's, it's very important sometimes when the opponent serve you, you, see you, you make this drop shot and uh, this keeps you safe against the very dangerous attack for your opponent. The backhand drop shot follows the same concept as the forehand drop shot. Much depends on your balance and the softness of your touch. Before the ball crosses the net, step in with your right foot. Keep your upper body low and turn your right shoulder forward. Place your racket under the ball and use the racket's rebound to let the ball bounce over the net. Contact the ball here. Keep your wrist loose because you want to absorb the ball's energy and make it bounce back as dead as possible.
Read the spin carefully so you can get the racket angle just right to avoid popping the ball up. Recover immediately because otherwise you'll be too close if the rally continues. This shot requires very good touch. Your body has to be well balanced so you can focus on your hand and neutralize the spin of the ball. Service motions are very different from player to player, but the goal is always to impart a controlled amount of spin and to place the ball exactly. The spin can be top spin or under spin, each with varying degrees of side spin, or it can be a no spin serve. Strategically, your serves have to fit your style. Make sure your serves produce a return you like. For example, if you prefer to attack top spin balls, serve more no spin and top spin serves. We'll start with some forehand serves. This is a side top spin serve. Notice how Loopy pulls the racket up and sideways on contact. This ball breaks wide into the right hander's forehand. For long serves, we look for the first bounce close to our end line and the second bounce close to the other end line. Make sure the contact is not too far back, otherwise the serve will be illegal. The serve has to be fast and surprising, otherwise it's too easy to attack. The second serve is also long, but it has opposite side spin. Watch the racket as it moves in the opposite direction at contact, which makes the ball break to Luffy's right. Variety in serving is important to keep the opponent from getting too comfortable. The short underspin serve is probably the most frequently used serve in high level competition. On short serves, the first bounce should be close to the net. The ball must just barely clear the net, and the second bounce again is close to the net. Practice making it bounce several times on the other side. This is a short side underspin serve. Loopy gets the variation by brushing sideways under the ball. In service practice, focus on controlling the wrist action and the timing. It's best to practice serves with a bucket of balls. This is a side spin backhand serve. Notice how Loopy drags the racket across the back of the ball. He can change the amount of underspin, or even turn it into topspin, depending on where he follows through. The more he moves his hand forward, the stronger the underspin. If he pulls the hand sideways and up at the end, it's topspin. This is a relatively pure underspin serve. The racket is a little more open, and most of the motion is forward. The ball contacts the racket on the lower part and rolls across the rubber. It seems easy to read, but look at the next serve. Almost identical in motion, but the ball contacts the upper part of the racket. Very little spin is generated, and a no-spin ball floats over like a knuckleball. If the receiver misreads it as an underspin serve, he will pop it up and give the server an easy put-away shot. Serve receive is probably the most difficult part of the sport. You absolutely must understand the spin. There are three clues you need to look for when reading spin. First, and most important, is the server's contact. If you can see the direction in which the racket was traveling at contact, you have a good chance of knowing what spin it is. If the racket is moving downward behind the ball or forward under it, it's underspin. If it is moving up on the back of the ball, it will be topspin. Any sideways motion will impart an additional sidespin component. So it could be side under or side topspin. Second, look at the trajectory. Generally, a topspin ball arcs more quickly, and if the ball floats, it's probably underspin. As a last resort, Look at the print on the ball. If it's low to medium spin, our eyes can pick up the spin direction. Watch how Loopy changes his wrist angle at the last moment to change the direction. 
Returning serves very much depends on experience. Recognize the spin, and if you miss anyway, you'll know what adjustments to make next time.